Hello, welcome. Today we are going to check out the cap mod for the Marshall TSL 100H. If you want to skip just to the playing, you can press somewhere here. If you want to skip to uh, the parts on how to do the cap mod, you can go somewhere here. But first, I want to talk about the Marshall DSL 100H. It's the successor to the JCM 2001, which was a successor to the JCM 900 and for that JCM 800 and everything. And even the JCM 900s and 2000s are an amp you either love or hate, it seems. Many people give it crap uh, for all kinds of reasons. The problem all the Marshall JCM line and the DSL range have, in my opinion, is you have to crank them a little bit. If you play them too softly, they're not gonna sound right. So I think most of the negative comments about the sound comes from guys who like test it in the store or something, like on a low volume, and then it can sound real fizzy and, and just dull. Um, but you have to crank it a little bit and then it really shines. Um, now the JCM 2000, uh, also called Dual Super Lead, DSL. Um, one of the biggest problems it had is what it wasn't built that well actually. If you look online and search for problems the JCM2000 had, like the list goes on and on. The main problem was the bias drift, like the, uh, the bias just went higher and higher and higher, basically cooking your uh, output uh, tubes uh, to hell and it just broke. And sometimes it took some parts with them, uh, worst case an output transformer. Another problem was that the PCB itself, uh, when it came too hot, it became conductive. So the whole PCB <laughs> came conductive. <laughs> Blows my mind. Though the JCM2000 was built in England and this one is built in Vietnam. Therefore, many people seem to give this one even more crap than the DSL line because DSL was all made in UK and this one is some Asian crap. But let me tell you, the Marshall DSL is in every way better built than the JCM 2000s, like in every way. For example, the PCB, if you look at the pictures, I'll try to give some pictures. Um, if you look at the PCB, it's much thicker, it's much sturdier, it doesn't become conductive. Um, then the output tubes are mounted on the chassis and not directly on the PCB. Those are things you normally see in, in boutique amps of, or, or, or like major priced amplifiers. This one retails for I think now 800 euros or something. So for that price output tubes mounted on the chassis is, is crazy. Um, Sound wise, you can debate all you want. I had the JCM 2000, um, I got rid of it because it failed on me due to bias drift and all other kind of problems and I just got rid of it because I was tired of it. I bought then the DSL 100H and in my opinion they are very close sound wise. Now, there probably is a difference, but I, like I said, I had both, not on the same time, but I had both and for me the sound is, is very, very similar. One of the biggest complaints people still have about the DSL and even the JCM2000 uh, because this mod you can also, also do on the JCM2000 I think it's not a value of a uh, capacitor but it basically is the same thing it's just almost the same schematics um, it still sometimes can sound a little bit fizzy especially in like low gain to mid gain uh, drive there is a solution for that, you can do the cap mod, it's like removing uh, a capacitor somewhere on the PCB, I'll show you how to do it later, and just take it out, just cut it and take it out, and that reduces the high end fizz a little bit. It can sound quite drastically depending on which kind of gain structure you use, so I was thinking to myself, like I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this mod or not, and I also read that some people replace the capacitor uh, with a value with something in between. I thought to myself, why not install a switch so you can switch between stock, like the normal cap in place, uh, the, ca the cap removed, like completely gone like most people do it, or a value in between and switchable so I could hear for myself uh, what the differences are and if I like them or not. The higher you go in volume and also in gain a bit, the less of a difference it makes. Uh, it also o only makes a difference on the uh, ultra gain channel or the lead channel and not on the, on the classic channel. So we'll test it out how it sounds. It's gonna be a quick demo. Um, if you want to hear more samples, leave a comment and then I'll see what I can do. 
So now how to do the cat mod. First take your Marshall DSL-100H and unscrew the back plate. Then turn it around and also unscrew the four screws at the bottom of the head. Uh, when that's done you can turn the case back around and take the chassis out. You can pull it by the transformers, it's one of the easiest way to um, yeah, pull it out. Then you want to turn the shell again and then you can place the chassis upside down with the knobs uh, away from you on the shell. So there you have it. This is the PCB and on there there is a, a capacitor and it's capacitor number 19. We'll zoom in on that. It's over there. I'll show it to you with an arrow here. That's C19, so capacitor C19. You want to cut that one if you just want to do the normal mod. By the way, on the older JCM2000 model, it's capacitor C12. If you want to uh, try and install a switch, just take two leads to the switch. You, of course, have to drill a hole in your Marshall. Scary shit. And place one capacitor with the normal value of the amplifier and one of the value in between. Then it's just a case of screwing it all back together and test it out and see how it sounds. 